In this video, we're going to explore how to integrate Firebase with a simple Angular app which uses signals for state management. It is a simple CRUD app with which you can store and maintain your contacts. Hey everyone, uh, it's Zweb Khan here and I'm a senior frontend engineer. Here on my channel, I show you how we can use the Angular framework to build awesome web applications and hopefully inspire you along the way as well. So sometimes ago, I created a simple contacts app which you can see and used Angular signals to manage its state. Now I wanted to showcase how signals can be used in a typical CRUD application. So in our app, we can add a new contact with a nice simple form like this, like name, the email, phone, and just click save. And it's, all, it's going to add our contact to our signals data structure that we have. Now we can view the contacts list and we can also delete this contact. So um, two parts of the CRUD application work. So yeah, it's not completely CRUD because we can't update a contact, but you get the idea. Now after this making this series of videos on uh, using signals, I got multiple requests to show how to integrate this with Firebase or any other server side API so that people could build a more real world application rather than just storing our contacts data in memory like this. So in this video, we're going to cover two ways we can use signals in Firebase. Nothing fancy, but we'll give you an idea of how to go about making full stack applications with signals. Okay, so let's get started. So first we need to integrate Firebase. Now to integrate Firebase, first we need to enable it from our Firebase console. And you can see here that I have a project here called Angular Signals CRUD and I have Firestore enabled in my project here. And, and if you go in Firestore, you can see that I also have a contacts collection setup and I have a list of contacts that were hard coded in the in this application and I have added all of them to a contacts collection. Okay, so you need to create a new project on uh, Firebase console and you need to enable Cloud Firestore. Then you need to go in your project settings and here you are going to find out your Firebase config which you need to import it into your application. So first let's go back to our application now and we'll see what we have we need to do here. So what we need to do here is we need to go in our package.json and see what our dependencies are. So I've already added the dependencies that we needed. Now remember I have the uh, app upgraded to Angular 17 and if you want to know how to do that you can use the update.angular.io page which provides a guide to update any angular app from any version to any other version then the more important thing is we need angular fire which is a wrapper package on top of the firebase javascript sdk and remember to use the 17.0.0 version because it is compatible with angular's version 17 great so once this is installed we can go in our app.config which is a, in a standalone application is basically the file where we bootstrap our application and you can see here I have used the import providers from function which is going to import the providers from module based providers. So Angular Fire provides a provide Firebase app function and a provide Firestore function which we can use to initialize Firestore in our app. And here we are going giving the Firebase config which we have used from a separate file here. Now remember this file does not need to or in fact should not be pushed to GitHub in a public repository because it contains private information. It should not be accessible to the general public. Great. So now that our application is integrated with Firebase, let's add the required functionality. So all of our functionality will be encapsulated in the contact service, which it already was. So all of the changes that we do uh, to convert to Firebase will be in this contact service. Okay, so as you can see, we have a signal which contains all of our contacts information, but this is hard coded at this point. So the first thing we need to do is to remove this hard coding. So what we're going to do is we are going to delete this and replace it with an empty array here because we are going to now get it from Firestore. The second thing we need to do is to declare the contacts collection from Firebase. So to do that, first we're going to import Firestore or in fact inject Firestore and we can use the inject function. And in this inject function, we are going to give Firestore. And remember, it's, it should be imported from Angular Fire Firestore. Great. Next, we need to declare a contacts collection and we have our contacts collection here for this we are going to use the collection function from angular fire firestore and within it we are going to first give the firestore instance that we have injected and the next thing we need is the collection that we want to refer to so we have the contacts collection that we want to get and then so that typescript doesn't give us any issues we need to also use as to actually cast it to our specific type so we're going to do contact a collection reference and we are going to do a contact here great so this is our contacts collection now since we need to first initially fetch all our contacts here we need to create a separate function 
called fetch contacts so let's create that function here and we are going to do fetch contacts and this is going to be an async function because it is promise based and in this fetch contacts we are going to just fetch our contacts using the firebase javascript sdks function and we are going to set it to the signal itself so the first thing we need to do is we need to do constant data is equals to we have a function called get docs in get docs we are just going to give the contacts collection itself great and this is get docs so this is a promise based function so it's going to give we need to give an await syntax here and then in the next line we need to use this data to set our signal so what we're going to do is we are going to do this dot contact signal dot set this is going to be an array and we are going to do data dot docs okay so data dot docs and we're going to map it and for each of the data item we're going to map it to an item which is going to do the dot data and we also need the id here now why we need that i'm going to show in a bit but we need the id here so uh, we are going to add an id here so that we can uh, so that we can use the id to actually delete the contact later on so we need the id as well here and firebase gives us back the id separately from the data itself so we are going to just use d dot id here okay so this should work and this should set our contacts data now how do we test this out so we're going to declare a constructor here and in the constructor we are going to call this fetch contacts now this is going to be called only once because the service contact service is provided in root here now root means that it's going to be initialized only once uh, at the start of the application so so this is perfect for our use case initially okay so let's try this out and see whether we get our data back or not great so you can see now we get our data the same data without any hard-coded values and the values that we get are from our Firestore database here. Great. So we have done an initial integration, but obviously we need to integrate our rest of the functions as well. And let's see how we can do that. So let's go to our add contact function now. Now this add contact function, you can see we have added a sort of a delay, a timeout of two seconds. And we just basically manually update our contact signal to add the new contact. Now, now what we want to do uh, with Firebase is that first of all, we're going to remove the set timeout because this was just meant to simulate a network connection. So, and we can remove this dot contact dot update here as well. Now the show loader and hide loader is going to remain the same, but we need to use the add doc function. So how to use the add doc function here? So you, to use the add doc function, first of all, we need to make this an async function because it is a promise based function. And then we're going to do await add doc. And here we're going to give the contacts collection, which we've already declared above. And the data is going to be an object from the contact that we're getting here. Great. So now let's test this out and see how this works. So now when we add a contact here, we can write Zweb. We can write this is Zweb at gmail.com and we can give a phone number here and we can click save. Now when we click save, everything else happens uh, correctly, but we see that we don't have any Zweb in our list. Has it been added? Well, I think it has been added because it successfully resolved here and the loader stopped. So that means that we need to refresh this. So once we refresh this, you can see that we have Zweb here. So what is exactly happening? Now we have added the document, but we did not refresh our contacts list. So now this is a sort of um, uh, the common way to do stuff when you use a REST API. So let's first integrate it in this way. And then we are going to change it into a better way later on using the reactivity that Firebase actually provides us. So the common way or the usual way to do this would be to just use the fetch contacts function, which we have already and just call it after adding the new contact. This way it's going to refresh our list. So let's say, for example, we add a new contact here. We're going to contact Zweb2 and let's say Zweb2 at gmail.com and we give a phone number here and we click save. And now when we see here, we can see that we have Zweb2 here. So it has refreshed the data from Firestore right after adding the collection. Now, in the same pattern, we can do something with the delete contact. Now here, the delete contact is using email, but we actually want to do it with the ID because that is more unique. So we are going to send in the ID here and we are going to remove the set timeout and the update function that we have like this. And then we are just going to use the delete doc function and this delete doc we are going to do contacts collection and in fact we want to create a specific ref before that. So it's not going to work on the contacts collection. So first we are going to create a ref to that. This is going to create a doc reference. So we're going to refer to this doc. We're going to do this dot firestore. We're going to give the contacts and then we're going to give the ID. So we're going to refer to this specific contact. And then in delete doc, we are going to give this ref. And then we also need to add the async await as before. So async and await. And of course, once we delete it, we also want to refresh the data as before. So this should work with one thing. 
we need to change where the id is being passed along so let's go to <clears throat> the contacts list here and in our this we are sending the contact email we're gonna con send the contact id okay it says that contact id might be undefined and we have created that like so so we're gonna make it like this so it won't be undefined okay so let's test this out now okay so it's it's saying that it's not assignable to parameter of type contact and this is because the add contact function basically it's taking a whole contact it might not have an id initially so what we're going to do is we are just going to convert this into a partial contact okay we can refine it further but for now we're going to make it partial contact which means it should be a part of the contact great so this compiles perfectly now and now let's first delete this one and you can see that it's deleted already the second one this is wave two one and we can see that it removes it from the list as well great so this works um, nicely but again you can see that you can see that there's a lot of code just to get some simple things working so we need to call fetch contacts again and again in the add contact and in the delete contact and you can imagine that if we had an update contact we would need to do the same thing so what's a better way to do this well a better way to do this would be to use the reactivity provided by firestore itself now firestore provides an uh, sort of a listener which you can listen to changes to your data and that listener has actually been wrapped in a in an rxjs observable by the angular fire library so let's see how we can use that and we can shorten our code a bit great so what we can do then would be to not explicitly change the contact signal by our own but actually link it to that observable that we get from angular fire and in turn from the firebase sdk so that observable is basically called let me just declare this here so let's create a private observable here and let's say contacts dollar is equals to we're going to call this collection data from angular fire firestore and it's going to refer to the same contacts collection that we already have and one thing we need to specify here is that the id field should be returned as id so that our data object can be complete here great so this is our observable that we need to use now how to convert this into a signal now angular has also provided with the signals api and rxjs interop package which you can use for this purpose so let's do angular core rxjs interop and here we can use the to signal function now the to signal function can be used anywhere but we are going to use this in our service at this point because our data is basically shared across different components and we want it to be subscribed to as soon as the app loads so basically the two signal functions subscribes to that rxjs observable instantly okay it's not going to wait for the component to initialize great so the contact signal then is going to convert into a read only signal not a writable signal then and we are going to use the two signal function here we're going to give the this dot contacts observable inside of it and you can see that this dot contacts is now giving an issue here and it says that object is possibly undefined and that's true because to uh, because a signal should al uh, always have an initial value while the observable does not need to so for these cases the to signal function actually provides an initial value property in this in our case we can provide it as an empty array great now since we have this contacts read only signal setup now connected to the observable rxjs observable giving us the contacts data we can actually just go down here and we can actually just remove this fetch contacts because we don't need to manually fetch the contacts Similarly, we don't need this constructor here. Any. Similarly, we don't need to call this and we don't need to call this. And we can just also remove our unused dependencies here. Great. And let's test our application once more. So now when we try to add a contact, let's see, we do swipe and we give our email address. We have our phone number here. We click save. You can go back and you can see that swipe is already here without us calling the fetch contacts function directly. This is all the power of reactivity which Firebase provides us. And we are actually just using this signal connected to the rxjs observable similarly when we delete it we can see that it deletes it and updates it in the list instantly so this is a much more reactive friendly way to implement firebase in our app and you can see the code has been simpler as well okay so this was your simple way to integrate firebase to a signal based application in angular 17 hope you found this useful and if you did please subscribe to my channel it helps me bring more content like this to you and other angular developers and thanks for watching i'll see you next time